What's going on, guys? I'm Fuller with Custom Offsets, Custom Offsets TV on YouTube. We're joined by Dustin, remotely, sort of. He's in his living room today. I'm in my living room as well, as usual. We're still doing this remotely, but I think we found a way to maybe have better quality audio and video. Not really sure. Gonna give it a try, though. Also, uh, we just launched a new giveaway if you haven't seen. We're calling this the Fuel on Fuel giveaway. It's fuel wheels, fuel tires. It's gonna be a sweet package. We'll ship it right to you. If you wanna get entered to win, all you gotta do is grab this shirt at customoffsets.com forward slash giveaway. The front is not as exciting as the back. Trust me, the back is way cooler. So uh, check that out, and then I think we'll jump into it. So this is another episode of This or That. We got Keaton asking the questions in the Google Hangouts, and that's all we need to know. Ram Minotaur or Chevy Reaper? I don't know what the, the Ram Minotaur is. I do know what the Chevy Reaper is. Um, so I'm gonna pick it, only because I know what it is. Dustin's probably gonna Google it, it looks like. Um, I'm Googling it right now. The, the Reaper, though, is not wouldn't be my first choice in pickup i think what they wanted to do was make like a raptor killer and what they made was something a bit gaudy <laughs> i'm just looking here the, it's funny you said the raptor killer because the ram minotaur uh the the title of this article is ram 1500 minotaur the raptor killer is already here <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing with the TRX and like all, all of these things are coming out as Raptor killers, but I don't know if you can ever beat a Raptor. Ford actually did it, you know, they made a production vehicle that you can go buy. All these other companies are like, we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it, then do it. Yeah, it looks like the Minotaur gets uh, 14 inches of suspension travel. They started making them in 2018. Uh, get some Fox internal, you know, bypass shocks. It, it looks like a decent truck. I like it. I think it looks really good. I'm gonna go that direction. Yeah. You get one of those. I'll get a Reaper, and we will put them to the test. And then we'll the race. Yes. Favorite wheel tire size. Just, just in general, if I had to only pick one size ever, I would pick 20 by 12s and 35s, because. If you're crazy enough and you want to try to fit that on like a leveling kit, you'll just be really stuffed in there. You'll never be able to turn, but it would look sweet. But also if you have a six inch lift, you can fit it on there with some uh, some pretty decent trimming. A little bit taller, seven, seven and a half, you can fit it on there. I think it's a good combo of, you get a lot of stance, you get a lot of lip, but you still have a little bit of rubber so that you don't like, you know, have a harsh ride quality and you don't have to stretch tires and all that kind of stuff. You literally had the exact same logic and reasoning behind it other than I was going to go 22 by 12 just because yeah. I want something a little bit yeah. bigger wheel, a little bit smaller tire. But I mean, you still, it still looks really good. It's still super functional yet. Um, and like you said, you can fit it on a lot of trucks these days. So, yeah, like, I mean, 35 is a big tire, you know, you're not going to put that on your Tacoma, but in general, for the most part, most lifted trucks, you can do something to make it fit 35s. 33s are a little more reasonable, but we don't like to be reasonable. You can stuff 35s on a uh, on a Tundra. Ask Brandon Jordan. You just gotta cut the body mounts off of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 2020 Power Stroke or 2020 Eco Diesel? 2020 Eco Diesel or 2020 Power Stroke? I guess we're kind of comparing apples to oranges if we're looking at the Ram Eco Diesel versus the six seven power stroke but if they mean like the three liter power stroke then it's a different situation there um which i think is probably the better comparison so we'll do that eco diesel versus three liter power stroke which is in the f-150 um i would go with the f-150 i've actually kind of been shopping for a truck now the whole world knows but if i sell one of my cars and the boat, I think maybe I'll just buy a new truck. So I'm kind of looking at F-150s and I just, I just like the way the F-150 looks. You get the sport package with the red stitched interior. Yeah, they're hot. I'm gonna go the other way on this one only because I was never a big Mopar guy as a lot of people know, but the new gen Rams look so good. They do Especially look Especially with like really the paint to match lower valence, you know, they look, that, or that front bumper, I mean, they look so good. And then knowing that I could get that with with a small diesel engine, which is gonna have more than enough torque for anything I'm gonna pull, and it's gonna get great, great fuel mileage. It's a win-win in my book. The new Rams especially do have a really nice interior too. Like they got that, I don't know how big it is, 8.4 inch or 12 inch or something like that, that Uconnect screen that they have now. It's pretty impressive. 
top tier wheels or top tier tires. I've said that before in other videos, I always go with, you know, you, sh you should spend more money on the tires than the wheels, not necessarily like the, in that literal sense, but you should pick a best, the best quality tire you can afford versus spending all the money on wheels and then buying some no-name tire because that's what actually is giving you traction on road, off road, wherever you're driving this thing. That's the only thing connecting your vehicle to the road. So I always spend a little bit more on tires. I actually just ordered a set of those new Toyo Open Country AT3s and then the Toyo plant shut down so they weren't able to ship them to me and uh, they were like, all right, do you wanna just switch to a different tire? And I didn't because I think it's worth waiting to get a quality tire. Yeah, I agree. And just to piggyback on that a little bit, I know we talked about this uh, a little bit earlier too, but cast wheels have come so far. You know, it was for a right. long time, it was that you had to have forged if you wanted to do something heavy duty. And that's just simply not the case anymore. Cast, a lot of the, you know, like I know you're out at King of Hammers and a lot of the race teams are running a standard method cast wheel, which switch volumes for... I didn't even know until I went there. I assumed they were all running the forged beadlocks, but many of them are just running the cast beadlocks. Yeah, and I mean, if, if that doesn't speak volumes for what you can do with a cast wheel these days, I don't know what else does. So, mm -hmm. yeah, tires are tires are where I would stick my money. Lowered cat eye Chevy or lifted square body Chevy? Keaton, why you make us pick this? How can you decide? I mean... <laughs> That's what I'm saying. On one hand, you know... I feel like every slammed uh, cat eye in Texas is just so clean, grabs my attention. But then on the other hand, you've got a classic square body that everybody seems to know and love. And you don't really need, like just a, I think a mild, like six inch lift on there, some nice wheels and tires. It, they have a very squared off stance, so making them a little bit wider looks really nice. Uh, I guess I would go a square body and I'm not a huge square body guy. I've said it before in videos too, but I think just the feeling that you would get driving a lifted square body, you got country music on, the windows rolled down. I think that would be where it's at. Crank windows yet too, you know? Oh, gotta, gotta do crank windows. <laughs> Even my GMC has crank windows. That's cause it's a work truck. Hey, you leave my work hey. truck alone. It's a great truck. I'm just saying that's why it's got crank windows. Um, I'm going to go the other way. <clears throat> I really like cat eyes, and I think that it would be super, super cool to just lay one down dirt nasty low, you know? Um, throw a little boost at it, either turbo or, or supercharger of some sort, and they make decent power because it's a 5.3. I'm just envisioning, like, like regular cab, short box, black on black, slam, just big, smoky burnouts. Yeah, it's like a modern version of the 454 SS. Tano? or camper top. So tonneau cover or camper topper? Now, do they mean just a regular tonneau cover versus like an actual bed camper or are they just saying the bubble? I'm gonna guess the bubble. Yeah, probably like the high rise. Yeah. Uh, I think I would just go with a tonneau cover. Like I really like the Lomax covers that we've been putting on. We put it on CO2, we put it on the white power stroke, we put it on the black power stroke. Um, it's a trifold, but it's really easy to take off completely. Like if you needed to haul something where you needed the full bed space, you could do it. Where like if you get the camper shells, if you need to load a dirt bike or something, it's not gonna fit. So you gotta take it off. And if you're by yourself, uh, you, it's like difficult. More difficult than a tunnel cover. Correct, yep, I'm in, I'm in agreement <coughs> with that one as well. Um... Just tonneau covers in general are so flexible, be it either, uh, you know, the, the trifold style that we have or even... Yeah, even the roll-up uh, ones. I mean, you just roll it up to your back glass and clip it in and now you have all of your bed minus six inches, but you'll be fine. Yep, and then they, they snap on and off so easy. They're usually just a couple of pressure clips and they pop right off there. So that flexibility yep. is worth it to me versus having that, that full, uh, full bed cap. Bonus question, take a trip to the depths of the ocean and discover new creatures or take a trip through the cosmos and see the entire universe? I can't mm. swim, I'm going to the stars. Ah, see, so this is going to be different because I would go in the ocean. Um, honestly, thinking about that though is a bit scary because you're going to be way deep in there, like to the point where the pressure of the water will crush your body if you don't have the right protective gear on. And also, I've watched plenty of shows on Discovery where they send little robots down there and they find some scary looking fish. 
<laughs> and I am not trying to get eaten, all right? But I would do it. I think it would be very exciting. Yeah, I can't swim. I don't. I, it just, dark water makes me uncomfortable. I, I'm out. I'm going to the stars, man. <laughs> oh, good luck up there. <laughs> That's another episode of This or That. Thank you guys so much for asking your questions. This is still fun for us to do. We actually get some sort of human interaction here. So uh, if you guys want to have your question featured on the next one, all you got to do is uh, comment it down below, uh, whatever you want to ask us, and we'll probably get it featured on here. we got a lot of questions, but Keaton does a good job of picking them. If you want to ask something that's wild and crazy and way out there, we'll always throw that in as a bonus question because that's always a good time, too. Don't forget the giveaway, customallsets.com forward slash giveaway. Otherwise, if you need wheels, tires, suspension, and you can't wait to win, you can get that at customoffsets.com. I right. Peace. Bye. Oh, yeah! <laughs> My AirPods right. died Please literally down. as we finished that. You're muted now. Am I muted? Oh, no. Fuller's muted. I was like, I'm My, air- My AirPods died as we finished oh. it. Whoa! <laughs> what? What? Tunnel. Tonno cover or camper topper? Yeah, tonno. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes.